Welcome back to Z-Speed and thanks for tuning back in. Today we will be replacing the front factory stereo speakers on this 2006 Honda Accord. So if this is something you're interested in, stay tuned and we'll get right on it. So to get started, we just need to remove the door panel from the doors to gain access to the speakers. And the good news is that there's not a lot holding these door panels on, just three Phillips screws and a bunch of push pins that go all along the outer edge of this panel. You can see that little tab right there, and we would depress that tab, that little piece of plastic slips out and it reveals a couple Phillips screws. And down underneath this little plastic shield right here there's another phillips screw once we remove those three phillips screws we can work on the push pins that go around the door panel so to get started removing this little panel i brought two tools in a very small flathead screwdriver and a metal pick and i was trying to decide which would do a better job at removing this and the problem is now solved it's hands down the very small flathead screwdriver will work way better than a pick ever will because the pick seem, seems to slide around but this little flathead screwdriver did the trick perfectly so if you can find a small flathead screwdriver it'll really make that job pretty simple now that we've got that panel removed we can go ahead and get our phillips screwdriver in here and remove these two screws and move on to the next panel. So now to remove this little rubber mat, all we need is that little screwdriver and it lifts right up. The only thing holding that down is a lot of dirt and some gravity. So once that is out of the way, you're able to get your Phillips screwdriver in there and it's quite a deep little well down there. So once I got it unscrewed, I actually had to take a magnet because I had trouble getting it out of that little hole here. So if you've got a magnet, that might be an easier way to retrieve this screw. Now we can take our plastic panel removal tool and go along the outer edge of this panel and pop it loose. These tools are great. If you don't have any, I highly recommend you get some. I'll try to leave a link to Amazon down below. They're pretty cheap and they really do keep uh, you from scratching up your door when removing these plastic panels. Once you get this broken loose, there is one little triangular piece up here that has to be removed. And basically we're gonna pull straight back on this. And there's just one clip. I'll show it to you right here. Right there, there's one clip. Just pull straight back on that and it should pop right out of the door. Now, before we can completely remove the door panel from the door, we do need to remove the cable that connects the handle to the door lock. So there's two clips holding this little cable on, and this first little clip is pretty simple to get loose. Just jiggle it a little bit and just go very slow because it's made of plastic, and you can see it popped out relatively easy there. Now, the second clip is definitely a little more stubborn and if you're standing in the position I'm standing in, what we want to do is slide that clip towards your right. So you can see I slid it off of that little uh, metal cable and I'm gonna get a better view here of the little clip. Here it is right here. So I slid it this way and uh, to the right, you can see it goes right and left, slide it to the right and it should unclip from that little metal cable right here. So take your time, definitely you don't wanna break that because it'll damage your, your door opening mechanism. So take your time with that. 
Now we're almost home free. Just a few more things to remove. We've got the power window switch. It's got two electrical connections here. We do have to remove both of these. And the good news, it's not too hard. There's just a little tab on the side of each of these clips that you have to depress and then it'll slide right out. So you, I can't get the camera any closer, but right here, you can see how easy that was. Now this one was a little more difficult. So I had to get my head down in there to actually visualize where the clip was. But once you get your head down in there and look around, you can see it, just depress it and it should slide right out after that. Now that that's removed, we have one more thing to detach and we're home free. And basically we have a little light bulb, a little 186 light bulb right down here in the door. And this thing detaches pretty easily. You just slide it right out. Be careful, that thing gets kind of hot. I almost burn myself. This is the clip that's a little more difficult right here. This one, you're gonna end up needing a pair of needle nose pliers to come underneath this and pinch it together and then it'll slide right out of the door. So I actually had to go get a pair of needle nose to detach this, but once you squeeze it together, it slides right out. So at this point, you probably wanna go ahead and disconnect your negative battery cable because now we're finally down to the meat and potatoes of the situation and it's time to remove the speaker. So we don't want to short anything out at this point. So removing the negative battery cable will assure that we don't run into any problems like that. Now you can see that this speaker is actually made of polyurethane. This is the original speaker and it's held up quite well. This is a 2006 and now it's 2020. So I'm just gonna upgrade all my speakers because I plan on upgrading the head unit as well. And I kind of wanted a fresh pair of speakers all the way around to go with my new head unit. So at this point, you're gonna need a very large flathead screwdriver and you're basically gonna push down on the top of that clip. And I'm sorry, I got my elbow in the way here, but you push down really hard on that top clip and, it, and pull out and it'll detach. And then the whole speaker just slides right out. So I'm gonna show you a little better view of what that clip looks like. Let me see here, there you go. So push down on that clip and it should pop out of the door and then we can basically remove the electrical connections from the speaker and we can get that out of the way. Now the key here is we want to save this structure, cut the speaker out of this little mount right here and place it right back in here so we'll get a factory fit. So I'm gonna show you how to do that next and then we'll work on the wiring. Now you're going to need six and a half inch speakers to fit into the old structure there. You can see six and a half or 16 centimeters. And I've got some actual Walmart specials, these Sony's here, they're 40 watts, but be, they'll be more than sufficient for what I need. I'm not going to be running any amplifiers with my new system. And you can see that the tweeter's a big upgrade and that these speakers are about all clapped out here. And it looks like they're getting close to tearing. They're so old. So this should sound pretty good. The main thing is that you want it to be able to fit into this housing and it looks like it lines up pretty well here. We should be able to get this to fit without much modification. So to get this old speaker out, we'll have to use an X-Acto knife and cut all the way around the uh, outside of the speaker. And then we'll have to come back here and remove all this plastic uh, backing right here. And we do need to preserve the integrity of this clip. So we'll try to leave as much plastic as we can around that clip. But I'm going to take a pair of wire snips and just try to slowly clip all this backing out so that we can get this old speaker out and put a new one in here. Okay, I'm gonna use a pair of wire clippers, but you can also use a Dremel, and you can see that Dremel might be a better idea here because as I use these wire snips and I go to clip one side of this plastic, the whole actual part of this plastic just snaps right in half. So it's a little brittle here. I guess it's because it's so old, but um, it's a little delicate. And when I go to snap, like watch this, boom the whole thing fractured on both sides. So Dremel, if you have one, might be a better idea. 
and you're uh, not going to end up fracturing something you don't want to. Now don't cut this area right here. I almost did, I really wanted to. You can see I'm sitting there with my wire clippers and I wanna clip this bad, but I decided no, I need to keep integrity around this clip right here because that's what goes into the door. So I'm gonna come back and show you how to do that a little different and leave a little more plastic there so that it uh, will hold up when you go to snap it back into the door. But you can see I'm going around the outer edge here and just slowly clipping the little plastic pieces so I can get this whole uh, framework to drop out here. So take your time, don't rush it. If you're using a pair of wire clippers like I am, go slow because you don't want to crack the whole structure. And uh, like I said, it's a little bit brittle here. So you can see now it's about ready to lift out here. So now you can take a, an X-Acto knife if you haven't done it already and go ahead around the outside of the speaker and cut around that because we're gonna to have to pull that whole speaker through. Now you can see where I decided to do here. Now let me show you a little bit better view, but I'm gonna clip down here away from that clip and just leave this whole area right here. I left all that plastic in there and uh, we can clean that up in a minute. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the X-Acto knife and cut this out and just go all the way around. That's not too hard there. And now that we've cut the speaker out, we can go ahead and pull it from the back side. You can see that uh, that was pretty easy to do. No problems there. I thought I could pull it this way, but no, it's gonna be better to flip it around and pull it from this side. So just take your time, go slow. Don't wanna break anything. You can see that it slid right out. So now that's out of the way. And this plastic's still in pretty decent condition actually. So now we're ready to uh, clean this up a little bit more. Uh, we still have to remove a little bit of that uh, speaker fabric, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead now and clip this a little bit closer. You can see how brittle this stuff is. And that should be enough plastic right there to keep the integrity of that clip. I'm pretty happy with that. And hopefully we can clear the new speaker around this area. We'll see when we try to drop the new one in. And now I'm just gonna kinda go around the edges here and uh, clip some more of this uh, plastic off. You can see this is kinda protruding here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. So yeah, it's not too hard. These little wire snips make pretty short work of this stuff. There we go, got that one. So now we're left with a pretty uh, pretty clean ring here. We can hopefully drop our new speaker right down into this and bolt it in without too much modification at this point. Okay, now we're ready to drop the speaker in and drill some holes to bolt this into this mount. And it just really depends on what kind of speaker you have and what type of mounts uh, come with the speaker. You can see I've got different options. I got little holes all the way around the rim. And I also have these little spiked areas where I can drop a screw in. That's why I'm gonna use these little areas right here. And I can just sneak a small uh, screw into, into each one of these. I'm gonna probably use four screws to uh, bolt this to the mount. And I'm just gonna go around uh, the perimeter and drill a little hole, starter hole, and then just screw it right in to this plastic mount. And so it just really depends on what kind of speaker you get um, as far as the mounts go. Okay, quick note before you mount the speaker though, we want to have the electrical connections facing towards the bottom of the speaker mount. So this would be the bottom right here, and this area right here is the top. So you want the electrical connections for the speaker to face towards the bottom two clips. So this area points down. So make sure you point that down because that'll give you a little more uh, room when you go to wire your speaker in. It'll be, make it a lot easier if you face the electrical connections to the speaker towards the bottom two clips. So now it's time to place the guide hole here and I'm going to face my drill inward just a little bit. I don't want it to come uh, through the out 
side of this mount. I want it to face inward just a little bit. And once I get that guide hold, you see it went straight on through pretty easily there. I'm gonna go ahead and place a screw in there and that'll stabilize the speaker so that it'll make it a lot easier to place my other three guide holes in without the speaker kind of moving around on me. So once you get this one placed, you can go around with your drill bit and uh, place the other three guide holes without it moving around. It makes it just a little bit easier. So this point is optional. I'm just basically taping over these holes that I did not use to get rid of some of the air seepage around the speaker, but it would be better if you use some foam speaker tape here. All I had available was some of this blue masking tape, but all I'm really doing is just kind of covering these extra mounting holes that I didn't use. Um, you really don't have to do this. I thought it might help a little bit if I could <laughs> cover those up, that there wouldn't be as much air seeping around that area. And now that we're now we're ready to uh, wire this into the door, I'm gonna show you a little trick though with uh, getting the depinning the old wiring harness so you don't have to actually uh, cut the wire at all. So basically, you can take this clip and you can open it up and slide the wires out. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. And you can see I've already released that main clip, and then you can pop this off right here. So you saw how I did that. And then you can see the two wires from the front side here. They'll be sitting right there. And then you flip it around here. And this is the part that's kind of hard to see, but you'll need a pick at this point. And you'll take, I used a nine degree pick, but you can see those little tiny tabs in there. And what I did was I pulled the tab towards me. Let me give you a better view here. Okay, I grabbed that tab and just pulled it towards me and then slid the wire out. So that right there, you pull that tab flush and uh, the wire will slide right out. You can just pull down on that and it'll just pop right out. So, you know, or you can just clip the wires if that's easier for you. Now it's time to plug the wires into the speaker and the striped, I think it's a green wire, uh, striped green wire is the negative and the solid color, and I believe it's white, is the positive. So I had a little trouble, as you can see here, I'm trying to get that little clip to pop onto the speaker, and it was just a little bit too tight, so I ended up uh, taking a small screwdriver and opening up the clip just a little bit, and that solved the problem. I was able to pop it on there. So the stripe wire is the negative and the solid wire is the positive when you go to plug these in. So I modified that clip just a little bit. You may have to open it up if it's a little bit tight, but that did the trick and I didn't have to modify the positive wire. So I got them both on now. And now we're about ready to go ahead and slide the mount into the door after we get this wired up. Now that the wiring is complete, it's time to slide these two tabs into the bottom of the door and then the top clip pops back in. So you're gonna have to tap that in. So I'm gonna give it a few taps here and boom, it popped right back in. And now that is a nice tight fitment there, just like factory. Excuse that hokey looking tape. I know it looks hilarious. It's all patch worked in there. And I would definitely recommend that you get some proper foam tape to go around the perimeter of this speaker. But uh, it did the job I needed to do. And you won't be able to see that tape once you put the door panel over that. But yeah, this fitment is great. It's just like factory. You're not gonna have any rattling around and you won't even know that anything's been changed out except that the sound quality will be vastly improved, of course, since you went with this nice little aftermarket speaker here. But yeah, that's all it takes. It wasn't too hard. I hope this helped you out. So smash that like button if this video helped you out and please consider subscribing if you haven't already. We've got a bunch of great videos this year and until next time, just keep on repairing.